Well, hello there, friends. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having a lovely year so far. I'm sorry I haven't been around much recently since my Christmas favourites video, but it has been a very eventful year for me already. So I thought in this video I'd bring you up to date with what's been going on in my life and then do the usual favourite stuff in terms of things that I've been going out and about and doing and things that I've been watching, that kind of stuff. So um, first of all, to bring you up to speed from my Christmas favourites video where my mother and I were coming down with COVID at the time I was filming it, we are absolutely fine. We got over it within a week. It just took another week for the last little kind of tickles in our throats and the sniffles to go away. It was just like a bad cold, really. Um, but yeah, certainly within the first week, and we were testing negative again. It didn't hang around for long because we were fully vaccinated, you know, and we're going to keep you know, getting the boosters as and when they're offered. Mum should get a booster in the spring at the very least. So that's great. Um, but yeah, we're absolutely fine. Um, it didn't affect us too badly because of the vaccine. So thank you, science. That's fantastic. But then in much more cheerful and interesting news, I've got a new job this year. Um, I was made redundant last year, as you'll remember, from a job I'd held down for nearly 18 years. So it was a big change. And during my career break over the last few months of last year, I was kind of looking around, you know, doing a bit of research, getting some leads from various connections that I have. Thank you to everyone, who, by the way, who gave me um, ideas during that period just to kind of prepare me for job hunting in the new year. But as it turned out, and things went in a very unexpected direction because my good friend Emily from Fashion Eister, she runs a YouTube channel and a blog under that name and various social media profiles. She came to me with an interesting offer because she has started a new job as a journalist. She's a trainee journalist with Newsquest Media, particularly focusing on their news shopper publication that covers various boroughs in South East London. And being blind, she needs various forms of help with it, which is getting through access to work, where you get assistance to help you do your job and bring you up to the same level as your non-disabled peers, basically, so you can do the the same job as everyone else. I used it when I was down in Devon at my old job. So she's got things like taxi travel and equipment, but she also needed a support worker to help her with things like note taking, transcribing interviews, gathering information, analysing data, putting images together, monitoring social media for breaking news stories, that kind of thing. And she came to me and asked me if I wanted the job because she knew I'd been made redundant. We've been good friends ever since I moved to London because I'd got in touch with her when I was trying to make connections when I moved up here. She was one of the people that I first got in touch with. She was one of the people that inspired me to start blogging and she knows about my skills and everything because I've transcribed some of her YouTube videos for instance in the past because I enjoyed them why not give something back so we went to access to work and we negotiated a very fair wage with them to be fair it was higher than I thought it was going to be so yeah they've offered a very fair and respectful hourly wage for the type of work that I need to do because it's quite a big skill set that I need to have really in terms of you know data gathering and transcribing and things like that these are all things that Emily kind of could do but it would take her a lot longer so I'm basically speeding up the process and then she can focus more on writing articles and conducting interviews and doing any further research and requesting specific pieces of information from people that she needs to and doing social media posts and you know taking photos that kind of thing so she still does a lot of work and she still does some of the work that I do for her it's just I take a lot of the weight off so she hasn't got to do quite too much of it and yeah it's just going really well so far Emily and I have been working together for a couple of months now already and she's over the moon with the work I've been doing as far as I can tell she's expressed her gratitude many a time I'm enjoying the work as well because you know, it's nice and varied there's always something different going on and I've just received my first payment from access to work for the first month of work that I did so that's really good that took a little while to go through about four and a half weeks from me posting the form off to me getting the money in my account so we did have to chase them a little bit just to make sure it was going through because that was the last kind of piece of the jigsaw to give us peace of mind that everything had been sorted so I'm glad that's been done and hopefully future payments will be a bit quicker now that my details are in the system and the job is only part-time it's only 22 hours a week but the hourly wage that access to work have agreed with me is fair enough and good enough that I can still live with it. I can still pay the bills. I still have enough to spend on leisure pursuits and I can save a bit as well. And it helps that I haven't got expenses like mortgage or rent or a car or kids or you know, loans, credit cards, that kind of thing. So I've got a very low level of expenses relative to a lot of other people, which is good. So that will help. So yeah, I've got enough to live on. It's just nice to have a stable income again now that I've got money coming in. And the other part of the job actually is that um, Emily is doing a diploma in journalism. So once a week she goes to classes for that and I sit in online and take notes for her basically so I'm kind of getting to study a journalism course without having to do any of the coursework or the exams which is fantastic. I don't want to be a journalist myself particularly but watching that course you know it has very friendly and engaging teachers so it's not boring it is actually very interesting it just you know makes me have even more respect for them learning about all the things they have to think about learning all the basics and some of the tricks of the trade and stuff like that so it's a bit of an eye-opener it's a nice course to sit in on that and when Emily passes it which she inevitably will she'll be able to expand her realm of journalism even 
even more and this is her dream career to be in so um, yeah I wish her all the best with it and I'm very proud that I can be playing some small part in that so yeah that's the big news this year and if you want to find out more about that I've written a long blog post all about um, starting this new job with Emily so do go and check that out I'll put a link in the description of course and you can find out more about it and talking of the blog even though I don't seem to have posted much on there recently I have actually been very busy on there over the past couple of months which is another reason that I've taken time out from doing new material um, because I've actually been doing a lot of old stuff Last year, I finally finished posting all the journal posts from 2002 to 2016. Um, these were posts from my personal journals that I'd never published online before, apart from a few in the very early days in 2002 when I was in a, in a very old social media site. But you know, otherwise, I'd kind of kept all that stuff to myself. So from lockdown onwards, I had started sharing stuff from my personal journal just to kind of fill the time, really, because um, there was nothing else to write about when we were stuck at home. So... Um, I started sharing them and people really enjoyed them. I think people enjoyed the nostalgia of it and just finding out more about my life in general and stuff like that. So thank you to everybody who enjoyed the journal post. And after I finished that, I looked at 2017 in my blog and thought, well, I really need to kind of redo this, really, because when I first moved to London, I didn't really focus on blogging that much. I wrote bits and pieces here and there, but I was more focused on getting out there, you know, in the city and enjoying myself, meeting people, that kind of thing, which was obviously the priority. You know, I had to kind of make connections and just learn my way around and just settle in. So I didn't write too much in the blog to begin with, and there were certain things I didn't write about at all. So I've basically gone back to 2017 and overwritten a load of posts and deleted some others and basically written new favourites posts for 2017 because there weren't any favourites posts there before apart from a Christmas one. So yeah, there's now proper favourites posts across all the months of 2017 with a lot more detail than there used to be before. A lot of it pulled from my private journals that you won't have seen before. So yeah, do go and check that out if you want to find out more about my first year in London. It's been quite fun to go back through that and just appreciate you know how much I did. Looking back at it, I'm surprising myself at how much I did back then. I'm glad I really got stuck in and did so much back then, just exploring and meeting people and getting involved with stuff. So yeah, it definitely laid some very solid foundations for the years that followed since. And I'm glad that I've got those favourites posts in place. There's now consistency. So I've got the journals up to 2016 and then from 2017 onwards, it's favourites posts and other you know, longer posts for very special events along the way. And then having done that, I've also gone through my blog and added content lists to all of my favourites posts and to some other posts as well. I'd already done it for a few posts, but now that I'm kind of using the WordPress block editor more, which techie nerds watching this will know what I'm referring to, it's much easier to kind of add anchor points, you know, bookmarks to create contents lists and things like that. So I hope that it will make it easier for you to find things that you want in the different posts, you know, because a lot of my posts do get quite long. So having contents list at the top, especially for these favourites posts as well as other things, will help you just to jump to things that you want to read about you know, in more detail rather than having to scroll through everything or you know, try to find certain terms on a page or whatever. And with that in mind, because I've created all the anchor points that allow me to do those tables of contents, also where there are any links in my blog or on the index pages in my blog to specific posts you know, about specific items in those posts, you should now be jumped directly to the relevant section of the post. Um, rather than again having to scroll down through it all so hopefully again that helps just to make the blog a bit more accessible you know a bit easier to kind of navigate you know obviously when you write a lot of material there's only so much you can do to help people out but it's been something I've been wanting to do for ages um, just to kind of add in those links just to make things a bit more direct when you click on them and then apart from that I've also done some other reformatting and stuff um, across the blog so yeah it's just been nice to go back and just tidy things up you know correct some links on my index pages as well and you know, just tidy up how some images are displayed and you know, correct a few typos that nobody had noticed, things like that. So at this point now, I consider kind of all my old posts kind of prior to this year really as effectively locked off. You know, I don't intend to go back and edit any of my old posts. You know, even if there's, little, even if there's typos in there, I'm not going to really bother fixing them unless it's you know, a really major issue um, that needs to be fixed. It's accepted, you know, by people who read blogs that, you know, old posts are going to have, you know, out of date links and information in them. That's the nature of the beast. So, you know, you're not expected to go back and correct all your old material. But I just thought I'd just do that kind of one big pass over it and just tidy things up just for my own peace of mind. And just, you know, for anybody who likes looking at my old material, it'd be a, it'd just be nice to read it and just more accessible to find the things that, you know, they want to read. So, yeah, I'm glad I did that. Had a little spring clean in my blog and now I can kind of move forward and just focus on just new material now going forward as I do new things. So then moving on to the things that I've been doing and enjoying, let's get into the favourites format as per usual. And first of all, I'll go back to Emily Davison because I'm not only working with her, but be because of that, 
and we are meeting up and socialising more as well. So in January, we went to the Natural History Museum together for a day, spent a good like five hours there exploring. You know, it's an amazing place that you never get bored whenever you visit. So we really enjoyed that. One of the highlights, for example, was in the Mammals Gallery where a volunteer there allowed us to feel a dolphin skull, right, which is really interesting as they talked to us about it. So that was pretty cool. And we also explored the main hall as well, where you've got that big blue whale skeleton hanging from the ceiling. That's a really impressive place in itself, just those few floors. There's so many different things to explore, you know, upstairs and downstairs. And we went upstairs and I took some photos of Emily as well, because one of the things that Emily likes to do is take photos for Instagram, of course, which always come out looking amazing. I'm not an amazing photographer by any means, but she's very good at making sure I'm in the right place. And I take plenty of photos as she poses in different ways and then she picks the one she wants to use. So it's always a bit of a thrill to see photos that I've taken on her Instagram. It's a bit of an honour, really. And then after we came out of the Natural History Museum, we caught the tube and went over to Chinatown to celebrate Chinese New Year. Why not? It's a good excuse to go and have some Chinese food. So we went to a lovely restaurant in Chinatown. It's the one at the end of the street where the Prince Charles cinema is. It's just facing you at the end of that street. So it's nice and easy to find. And yeah, we had a lovely meal in there. I had chicken wings for starters, followed by some sweet and sour pork with shredded chicken rice. That was very, very tasty. And then Emily took me a few doors down the street after our meal to try um, some bubble waffles or specifically an ice cream cone made out of bubble waffle material. And yeah, it's really nice. I've never had bubble waffles before. And we even filmed a little clip for Emily's Instagram stories as well, introducing the world to the fact that I am now a support worker. And then in February, Emily and I met up again and went to the Museum of London Docklands to have a look at their executions exhibition, which was bigger than we expected. It was really interesting as well. And there's also an audio guide to go with it as well, which you can look up on uh, Smartify, um, which is a really useful app. And there are QR codes in the museum as well that you can scan to access the relevant tracks. So we listened to that uh, throughout the exhibition as well, just focusing on certain objects as it does on your way around. It was an audio description, but it still gave us enough to understand you know, what the objects are made of and what they've used for and stuff like that. And we could see well enough by getting close to things or you know, using our magnifiers, monoculars, whatever. So yeah, we really enjoyed the exhibition. And then when we came out of that, we went upstairs to the top floor and had a little look around up there and worked our way down because that's how you're supposed to view the museum in chronological order. You go from the top floor downwards. So we didn't see everything. We didn't have enough time to look at everything in detail, but we kind of made our way down and deliberately timed it so that when we got down to one of the floors, we were able to hear a talk about the whaling industry, which was really interesting as well. Lots of surprising facts in there. So it's well worth, you know, if you go to the Museum of London Docklands, which I very much recommend, go to the executions exhibition before it closes because it's not there forever. It's only a temporary exhibition. But also have a look at the screens that are in there to see what talks are going to be happening that day because you never know what's going to be talked about and they have some very interesting topics that they cover. And then after we came out of there, we caught a boat, caught a Thames clipper down to London Bridge. And we got off on the south bank, had a little walk along. I took some photos of Emily by Tower Bridge for our Instagram. And we went for a lovely meal at the Real Greek restaurant, which is just by Tower Bridge. So I'd never had Greek food before, but it was nice to try it. We really enjoyed it. She had a special Groupon deal for that. So we had a special menu that we could kind of pick various items from, which was very, very good. So yeah, I enjoyed that. It was nice to try something new. And that's kind of the thing I like about hanging out with Emily. You know, she's much more experienced in terms of culture and foodie stuff than I am. So, you know, she can show me these things. You know, she's already got a few ideas for other things she wants to show me so I'm kind of learning from her as I go along which is great but then I have been out meeting other people and I've been out on my own a bit as well it's not all about Emily by any means so I went to an Anna Ridge Network meetup at Westfield Stratford City to mark Rare Disease Day and so it was nice to meet a group of people in Anna Ridge there these Anna Ridge meetups are always nice because we tend to get one or two people there who've never been to one of these meetups before so for them it's a bit of a revelation a bit of a joy to meet other people with the same conditions for the first time so yeah they enjoyed that there's some children there as well as adults and yeah everyone got on really well it was really pleasant as per usual and then on another day I went to London Zoo by myself because I have a membership with them so I want to try and make some use of it this year in particular I wanted to see their new monkey valley habitat which is basically where they've taken over an aviary in that section of the zoo that's kind of on the other side of the road from the big main area of the zoo you go through a kind of an underpass to get to it so I went over to that the thing I like about that is that there are a few audio description tracks you can listen to via the website or via QR codes that you can see there there's some touch objects about the construction of the aviary the monkeys can kind of jump around in that's really good to be able to touch those and then there's also a big statue of a colobus monkey family there so you can get close up and see how the monkeys look and feel and stuff and the big part of the attraction is this big aviary this kind of 
huge open structure in the outdoors, you know, all covered in mesh, of course, the monkeys can't get out. But within it, there are all sorts of rope ladders and towers and things that the monkeys can jump over. And you can walk through it, led by a guide. They guide small groups through at a time, and then you can get audio description for it, as well as talking to the guide. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that on the day I was there, because they do close it at certain points during the day, so the monkeys can rest in the big building next to it. I did see them come through the window a little bit, but yeah, I will have to go back and have a go at the walkthrough as well, because it'd be fun to have the monkeys kind of jumping all around you and kind of wandering around and stuff. But yeah, I still enjoy having a look at the area anyway. I had a little walk around the rest of the zoo as well. It's always nice to see some of the other animals there too. And then I've been out for various walks as well, of course, as I like to do regularly. So I went for a nice stroll around Regent's Park with my friend Claire, which we like to do every so often. It's always nice to see her. And then on my own, I've been gradually filling in more and more of the map that I've been doing since lockdown, basically filling in as many streets as I can. I'm never going to fill everything in in the city by any means. It's far too big. But gradually, since the lockdown days, I've been filling in more and more of the map using the Strava app. So this past couple of months, I've been wandering around Pall Mall, Soho and Mayfair and seeing some of the garden spaces in Mayfair, for instance, like Grosvenor Square and other bits and pieces. And I've also seen some bronze sculptures of fashion photographer Terence Donovan taking snaps of model Twiggy. And that was kind of in a very random place in Mayfair. It's amazing what you find when you walk around the city. That's another reason I like wandering the streets. You find all these lovely buildings and random statues and artworks and nice plants and things like that. There's always something somewhere to look at wherever you walk, really. So then moving on to things I've been watching, and there are a couple of dramas I want to mention first. I won't say too much about them because A, you probably know about them already, and B, I don't want to give away any spoilers for people who haven't seen them yet. But the first one I mentioned is Stranger Things over on Netflix. I'd seen the first three seasons before, but I rewatched those and then watched the new season four from last year as well at last. So I'm all caught up with that, and that's a great show. You know, it's set in a town called Hawkins in America, which finds itself connected to this dark, dangerous parallel universe, basically, that kind of people disappear into, and there are monsters in there that kind of want to get out and invade the real world and stuff like that. So it's really good. There's plenty of tension and action in there. A lot of the action focuses around a group of children from Hawkins who are investigating it. One of their friends disappears into this upside down world and they meet this girl called Eleven from a local laboratory where kind of this portal into this other world has been created. And she has very special powers. She can move things with her mind and stuff like that. And basically, you know, the more they look into it, the more mysterious and dangerous it becomes. And adults get involved, of course, as a local police officer who gets heavily involved and family members and people from school and stuff like that so the more the series progresses the more people get involved the more danger they're in etc etc so it's pretty good and it's set in the 80s so there's a great soundtrack to it as well there's some songs from the period that are used as well as an original score as well that accompanies it which is very atmospheric and very good so yeah it's a very good series yes there are flaws in there there are plot holes and some silly decisions made by the characters and some characters aren't that good stuff like that but a lot of dramas you can say that about it is ultimately entertaining and I enjoyed watching it again there is a fifth season on the way as well and there's also a stage show coming to the West End which acts as a prequel to the series so I'm going to be interested in seeing that especially if they do audio described performances for it and then the other drama I saw was the one that everyone's been raving about since the start of the year and that's Happy Valley on the BBC that returned for its third and final season after a seven year gap since the last series so it's been quite a long time but there were clearly very high expectations for it and it lived up to those expectations evidently because everyone was raving about it on social media I'd never seen it before and my good friend Simon he knew someone at his workplace who had given it a go and got hooked on it as well so I said I'd give it a watch and see what it was like and yeah it's very very good you know it's written very very well and the central character in it is police sergeant Catherine Kaywood she's a very strong independent woman she takes no nonsense from anyone she's quite fun to watch when she's in a kind of full power mode nobody messes with her at all but she's also vulnerable as well because her family's had a traumatic past and the man responsible for that trauma is released from prison and each wants to make sure justice is done to the other in their own way so it's a little bit of a kind of a cat and mouse thing going on when they're trying to find each other and it's just yeah really good there's other storylines as well but they all centre around Catherine's situation in one way or another so yeah there's a lot of tension and drama and emotion in there and a bit of humour as well here and there but it's all about the tension really and it's really well put together there's some nice cliffhangers at the end of some of the episodes as well and it's a nice payoff at the end it's a nice finale so yeah if you've been wondering what all the fuss is about I do encourage you to give Happy Valley a watch it's well worth a go I'm glad I checked that out so moving on to comedy for the final section of this video and last year you'll remember I saw Sarah Millican's show Bobby Dazzler live at the Hammersmith Apollo very very good and now she's released a video version of the show that was recorded in Dartford on her website so you can download it and keep it for as long as you like or for a year you can stream it before they take it off the website and you've basically got you know a full recording of the show and a couple of extra features as well so I'm really glad I got that not only did I get the show and you know the two extra features but also because I was one of the first customers to buy it that way I also received a signed postcard from her through the door as well which was a nice surprise so that was really good to have as an extra souvenir but also because there's been so much demand 
demand for a DVD of the show as well. She has now agreed to release a DVD, which is coming out in April. So it's only a limited run because she wasn't intending to do it in the first place. So if you want to pre-order it, I suggest you do so as soon as possible in case it runs out. But um, yeah, she is releasing a DVD. It'll have all the same extra features as on the website, plus a couple of others that she's since posted on her YouTube channel. So yeah, it's a really funny show. Um, Sarah Millican's great, and I'm going to go and see her next tour as well. So yeah, I'm glad I've got the download of that, and then I'll obviously replace that copy with the DVD when it arrives. Yes, it means I've paid for the show twice in effect, but she's very good. I don't mind doing that. And then ventriloquist Paul Zerdin has released a brand new hour-long stand-up special of his own called Hands Free on his YouTube channel. Completely for free, which is very generous of him. And that's very funny as well. You know, he's got all his usual puppets, Sam and the baby and old man Albert. And you also see Douglas, the roadkill urban fox and Roger, the bodyguard. And he also gets a couple of people up on stage and puts masks on them to turn them into human dummies. So it's all very funny. There's some very funny routines in there. It's very clever routines as well, especially one at the end where he takes on three characters at once. And there are also some little film segments interspersed throughout the show as well, where he goes out on the streets and pranks members of the public with his ventriloquism skills. So yeah, it's a really nice hour long show. And as I say, very generous that he should upload that for free. And then on TV, I've been watching all the usual stuff, QI and The Last Leg, Cats Does Countdown, Would I Lie to You, Live the Apollo, that kind of thing. Michael McIntyre's big show has also come back because that's been obviously absent for the past few years because of the pandemic. So it's been nice to see that back. I don't like every guest he has on there. You know, whenever I record it, there are always little bits I skip here and there. But there have been some good guests on there that I like as well. I mean, there was an episode featuring Chris Ramsey in the Midnight Game Show, Jonathan Ross doing Centre Wall, and the legendary Nile Rogers with Chic playing disco classics. I mean, how you can not enjoy that, I don't know. So yeah, that was a good episode. That was good fun. And there was also a fun episode featuring Alexander Armstrong doing the Midnight Game Show as well. And there were some issues with Stacey Dooley's flip phone in the Centre Wall game during that, which was quite funny. There was also the Unexpected Stars, of course, who are always well-deserving of their little moments of fame that they're surprised with, including an elderly blind lady among them, which was nice. So yeah, it was uh, nice to see Michael McIntyre uh, back doing that show and he's also going on tour as well so I will try and catch him on his tour if I can. And then the Gold Channel have produced colourised versions of two classic episodes of Hancock's Half Hour starring Tony Hancock namely 12 Angry Men about his time on a jury and the blood donor about him giving blood as the name suggests. So my mother and I watched those together because you know, they're classic episodes that we find really funny and the colourisation has been really well done the colours feel nice and natural and you know, I know there's painstaking effort put into it so well done to everyone involved with that I know it took a long time to do. We didn't bother watching the documentary about Tony Hancock that Gold also put on and we didn't bother watching any of the other kind of black and white episodes that you can see out there because we're not massive fans of Tony Hancock but those are the two most famous episodes and the two best episodes of his really so if you're going to colourise any of them those are the ones to do and I'm glad they did so they look really nice and then finally we listened to a radio documentary celebrating the TV sitcom Some Others Do Have Them you know that classic sitcom starring Michael Crawford as Frank Spencer brilliant show really really funny and this radio documentary was produced actually in 2015 for Radio Solent to mark the show's 40th anniversary so we didn't hear it at the time back then but it's now been repeated on BBC Radio 4 Extra so we got a chance to listen to it my mother and I and we really enjoyed it it was really interesting lovely tribute to the show and gave some nice insights and stuff so yeah we enjoyed listening to that as well and that's it I finally caught up with everything at long last so thank you very much for watching that I hope you found that interesting as always as usual, there's a lot more detail in the blog post accompanying this video because I can't mention everything here or this would go on for hours. So do go and check out my blog post if you want to find out more. Also check out the blog post about my job with Emily if you want more detail about that. And there's also a blog post um, with an interview with people involved with an accessible panto as well that I've done recently. It is an advert. I have been offered um, complimentary tickets to go and see the show. Um, but you know it does look genuinely good genuinely fun especially for children of course so yeah do go and check out that panto interview post as well it was very generous of a lady from extant um, the company of visually impaired actors to uh, put time aside to answer my questions there so yeah there's plenty going on and there's plenty planned for later in the year as well i've already got a few shows booked for example and now that i'm finally earning money again i'm going to try and book a few more things if i can in the months ahead you know i just wanted to wait until i was sure i was being paid before i booked too much stuff of course and then later in the year, there's also my 40th birthday that I'm planning for. So I've already got a friend coming over to stay and, you know, I'm going to be seeing a few other people as well if I can. So, yes, yeah, plenty to look forward to. And yeah, that's it really. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you're having fun as well. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as per usual. And I will see you for another video very soon. Bye for now.